These aren't the stories your mother told you. No, these are the other stories. <laughs> It's important to us at The Other Stories to approach every story with sensitivity and respect for all cultures and backgrounds. This episode contains historical language and references that are considered offensive, including outdated terms for Native American individuals. Listener discretion is advised. The Other Stories proudly presents Swift Bear and Laxon, Chapter 4, The Tribe with No Name, written by Richard Reynolds and narrated by Justin Fife. They called him Swift Bear. His own people turned their back on him on account of his being some sort of freak of nature. Faster than any horse born and the strongest son of a bitch I ever seen. Prone to visions of his heathen bear god. Putting him on track of unnatural abominations meaning nothing but harm. I go by Mark Laxon, previous uh, no good cur, but seeking redemption, I partnered with old Swift Bear to roam the land and hunt creatures from Satan's own asshole. We was having a pleasant stroll through the meadows when my dog shit luck kicked in. A hail of gunfire rung out afore a beast fell from the sky. It staggered on four legs as Squiddy grabbers rippled along its flanks and massive wings stretched out to aid balance, which were shredded, likely from that gunfire. It come to face us, and it didn't have no face, just skin puckering inwards. I recognized it as a type we'd fought back yon. Christ alive, it's another asshole face! I screamed. It were more horse-like than the last we faced, and it started bucking all over. Bear pulled his knives and jumped on its back, plunging the blades deep into the base of the wings. Its face blossomed open to screech a sound that shook my brain. I pulled my dragoons and was firing at its sides, but them grabbers was everywhere. It bucked harder now, throwing Bear as I come close trying to fire on its underside. A grabber reached and took my arm, yanking till I dropped my pistol. I fired with my free arm, but it grabbing that too. I was helpless as a shit-ass baby. Bear come to help me, and it done grabbed him up, gripping his arms like a boa. He jumped his feet against his side and pushed hard, yanking back at the grabbers till they ripped clear out its body. I felt like my arms was breaking when I become aware of a rumbling. Looking round, I see maybe twenty engines on horseback closing in. The beast screeched at him and they halted, some drawn rifles. Don't shoot! Came a voice. You'll hit the man! The ranks split, giving way to a huge black man, brandishing a machete. He come upon the beast fearless and hacked at its leg, the blade lodging into the bone. The beast reared and tossed me aside, then blow my prick if that man weren't under the beast hoisting it high, strong as a fucking ox. He slammed it down on its winged back and was at its side, bundling them grabbers with his arms and legs. Swift Bear, he hollered, and Bear took his lead, bunching the grabbers on the other side, whereupon the gang came up with their guns, firing round after round into its soft underside until a little more than mush. I was on my ass, rubbing feeling into my arms, when an old woman came in and looked me over. You'll be fine, she says. You a medicine man, lady? I asked. What a strange question, she says, then point to the black man. Freeman's our medicine man. He was scooping bear up in a hug. I joined him. Thanks for saving my bacon, I says. Guess y'all know each other? Know each other? <laughs> Taught him everything he knows, he says. Bear grinned. The man suddenly grabbed my face and stared into my eyes. You've seen things. Ain't for a man's eyes, ain't ya? He's glimpsed beyond, Bear answered. We fight together, here 
is brave. Well, hell, the man says. That makes you part of this tribe, too. Let's get to camp. There's strange goings on. The big man, Freeman, asked the engines to bring the beast along. Bear was mixing in with them, pleased to be among folk. I hung back with Freeman. So, how someone like you come to lead them? I asked. You mean, why is a field boy like me running with godless savages? He says. Easy, I says. It's unusual is all. I got me some faults of character, but that sort of thinking ain't one of them. Way I see it, being an asshole is what makes you an asshole. Nothing else. There's truth to that. He says. Sorry, friend. Let's start afresh. Gideon Freeman. We shook. Mark Laxon. Well, Mark, I ain't the leader. More like the guide. Fox talkers the leader. He pointed to the lady I seen previous. That old woman? Don't be fooled. He says. She's got a mind of a general and the power of persuasion I can't fathom. Woman could sell hunger to the starving. I point us in a direction she keeps us organized and in provisions. Bear seems pally with y'all, I says. Told me his people turned their back on him. We ain't his people. Freeman says. This ain't a normal tribe. We come for all over. There's Cheyennes here, Apache, Sioux, Pawnee, Comanche, Arapaho, Navajo, Nez Pierce, and one descendant of Igbo slaves. We's each outcasts or survivors of massacre. Providence brought us together to serve a higher power like you and Bear. He was with us for a time, but he had his own path to run, and he does more good on it. About then, we reached the hill's crest. Down at the bottom was the tribe's wagon train, 40 or 50 wagons, carriages and caravans, and a big circle. There was more horses and Indians, even some kids playing. I thought Indians lived in them big tents, I says. And not convenient for a tribe of nomads. Come on, there's something you and Bear should see. Freeman led us through the wagons, and at its center, was another circle of engines standing sentinel over something's dark as the ace of spades. Getting closer, I seen it was a globe, tall and mean, floating off the ground. It were endlessly black, but with the thousands of points of light casting back to the center, it seemed to go backwards forever. The closer you looked, the more you got the sense you weren't looking at no globe, but down a bottomless tunnel. Bear, mesmerized, moved forward. Freeman grabbed him. No closer. It exerts a pole. Bear pointed at it. Stars, he says. And was right. Them lights was stars, like the night sky had been balled up. As we move around it, them stars shifted in ways that didn't make sense. But whichever way we seen it from, I couldn't shake the notion I was looking into something not at all. The hell is it? I asked. Freeman shrugged. We came upon it yesterday. Knew it was bad news or we wouldn't have been brought here. I was divining for answers when that beast appeared from it. That shook Bear. Those beasts are death. More must not come. We tangled with its kind up north, I says. Killed an entire territory before we caught up with it. And you don't want to know what it done with the dead. Things got powers you can't imagine. We'll keep God, Freeman says. I aim to get some answers. And with that, he brought the beast over, chopped off a limb, hacked away a flesh, and cut the bone into fragments. That done, him and some engines tossed the beast at the star globe to see what had happened. And Lord, but it sucked it right in, pulling far out of sight in the blink of an eye. We was all astonished, but... Freeman sort of studied it for a time, then unrolled a leather sheet and started tossing them bones about it. Fox Talker took me and Bear away, ordering us to wash up, have us a good feed and take some rest. Bear looked happy, talking with the tribe, laying with the kids. 
a right nice to see. As night came and fires lit, I figured I'd earn my keep and took up guard duty. Freeman quit messing with them bones, so I got my scattergun and joined him. What's that shit you was doing? I asked. That shit is a ritual passed down from my people. He says. They were neary folk, alpha prophets, witch doctors, you might say. We use the bones for divination to commune with a higher power. That bear god of swift bears? I says. Only kind of. His animal spirit's a way of making sense of messages he receives from beyond. He does and visions what I do with the bones. I'm talking about the higher power. You mean the proper god from the Bible? Daxon, I got me lynched one time and saw beyond the mortal veil many have. The hereafter is the higher power. Call it God if you like, but friend, the mind of a man ain't capable of understanding but the tiniest speck of what it is. It's only our arrogance speaks that we can. We wrap it in a man's shape, attribute it petty needs like adoration, write a book of stories, and declare it to be the truth and final word. But it ain't. Shit, that's mighty heretical coming from someone named Gideon, I says. He smiled. There's some fine lessons in that book, I grant, and it's full of splendid names. Right, Mark? It is at that, I answered. Christ, with what you and Bear tell me, this thing's seeming bigger than just fighting devils. It don't have to, Freeman says. I'll boil it down. There's our world and others in the heavens. That's the mortal veil, set in motion by higher power that lies beyond. That's a natural order, but there's a corruption seeps into the mortal veil, see? What Bear calls dark spirits, I interrupted. Right, which ain't of the natural order and seeks only ruination. So Providence creates champions to keep the corruption in check. Some are closer to the higher power than most folk. Some got extraordinary ways. I could do with some of that, I says. Wouldn't mind being monstrous strong like you. You've survived so far, so you must have something. Extraordinary fortitude, maybe. He says. Pig ignorance is more like it, I says. And he laughed. So you learn anything from that divination? <sighs> Nothing useful. He says. I'm told it's a road, kind of, and and nothing we can do about it until we ride it. I tell you, fast as monsters keep appearing about, I can't help feeling the corruption's pulling ahead. There's a reckoning coming. Gunfire. The guards are firing on a beast that come out of the stock of them. I pulled and shot too, but it opens his asshole face and screeched so hard it dazed us all. It started to fly, but Freeman run and chopped off a wing, grounding it. He started cutting its grabbers, but not fast enough. It got him. Then the two was grappling. Freeman heaved it up and slammed it down, which I took as an opening, ran over with my scatter gun, shoved it into the pucker's head, and blew it to smithereens. Then another beast flew out of the stock low, fast as shit, missing me by a gnat's fight, only to smash head first into a carriage, tipping it over. Freeman was hefting the dead beast. He threw it at the star globe and it was sucked away. We turned to see the other beast compose itself and grab up a child before it took off. Don't let it go, hollered Fox Talker. But no one wanted to take a shot lest they hit that child. 
Bear comes sprinting out of the darkness, jumped onto the failed carriage, then launched himself at the ascending beast, catching its head in a hug and wrapping his legs around the wing, twisting it till it crashed groundward. Freeman threw his machete. Bear caught it and started hacking the grabbers till the child was free. He put himself between the fleeing child and the beast, dropped the blade, then ran at it, dipping low and hitting it with a tackle to its underside, driving it up aloft as he powered forward, then pushed it hard at the star globe. But a grabber hooked him, and he disappeared with the beast. I screamed, abandoning the two bits with a sense remaining to me, and hurled myself in after him. Blackness. Then I was toppling ass over tit down the dick hole of infinity, faster than any natural fall. Black void of the heavens whipping past me, but I was apart from it. In a tunnel cutting through it. Whole world swung toward me, then arced away, and my sense of the heavens didn't go straight, they curved. I took control of my descent and found I could speed up if I angled just so. Balls of fire and orbs of emptiness bigger than anything you can conceive swung past. For long, I could make out something ahead of me. It were bare, still fighting that beast. It had them all grabbed and they went a spin because of its wings, but he was stabbing at something fierce. I dived faster, pulled my colts and took aim as I drew level. Bear saw me and made himself small, and I emptied both barrels into his face. It let Bear go, but he grabbed its wings and angled it to the boundary of that tunnel, then shoved it with his feet. It burst out of the tunnel into a cold void and was gone in a heartbeat. Weren't more than another heartbeat, we crashed out of the far end of that star tunnel onto solid ground. And that's the story of how we come to be on a different world. What we done there, that's a whole nother story. This is not the end for Swift, Bear and Laxon. Stay tuned for apocalyptic nightmares, evil cults, mad scientists, masked adventurers, and more secrets of existence revealed in the next thrilling season of Swift, Bear and Laxon. Today's episode of The Other Stories was Swift, Bear and Laxon, episode four, The Tribe With No Name, written by Richard Reynolds and narrated by Justin Fife, produced by Carl Hughes with music by Roy Bush Band and Cube Sounds and Tom Robson, The sound effects provided by freesound.org. The episode illustration was provided by Luke Spooner of Carry On House. A quick thanks to our community managers, Joshua Boucher and Jasmine Arch, and to Joshua Boucher for helping with our submission reading. And of course to Ben Errington, the wandering rogue of digital discourse. His posts are like showdowns at high noon. Draw! <laughs> Richard Reynolds is the owner and operator of Ground Zero Comics, a small shop in Mansfield, England, but he writes, draws and produces his own comics and strips whenever he gets the chance. You can read these comics for free on the shop's website, groundzerocomics.co.uk, under the free comics sidebar. Justin Fife is a voice actor and podcaster. You can follow him on Twitter at, at Justin B. Fife. The Other Stories is a production of the Story Studio Hawk and Cleaver, and is brought to you with Creative Commons, Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives License. That means don't change it, don't sell it, but by all means, share the hell out of it.
Until next time.